Oh, hey, hi, I'm Crazy Chris, and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. I'm just doing a little gliding on molecules today and going over today's science file. And today's science file, it says, what is the science behind ice skating? Well, that's a great question. Try this. You'll need a piece of wood, a milk jug, some 20 gauge wire, and some ice. Start by getting a board with a hole in one end. Then tape it to a table. Get a milk jug and fill it three quarters full of water. Now attach the wire to the handle of the milk jug and twist the wire into a loop. Now place the wire through the hole in the board and place the ice cube under the wire. This takes about 10 to 15 minutes, so I'm gonna speed things up. In half. Here you can see where the wire went right through the ice cube. And if I hear if I even flip it over here, you can see where the bottom where the wire even exited the ice. So why does the wire go straight through the ice cube without ever cutting the ice cube in half? And what does this have to do with skating anyway? Well, don't look at me. Take a closer look at this. To understand why the wire passes all the way through the ice cube without ever breaking it, you first have to understand the molecular structure of ice. You might think of ice as one solid crystal structure, but it's not fully solid. Air molecules pass heat energy to the outer layer of frozen water molecules, which stops the outermost layer of molecules from completely freezing. This causes the outer layer of water molecules to form vibrating chains that act almost like a liquid. The milk jug pulls on the wire, creating pressure on the ice cube, which lowers the freezing point of the water down to about minus one degree Celsius, melting this layer of liquid-like molecules and cutting into the ice cube. As the wire passes through the ice cube, it releases pressure above the wire. When the pressure is gone, the ice cube refreezes above the wire, allowing the wire to pass right through the ice cube without ever cutting it in half. Same thing happens when you go ice skating. The pressure from your skate lowers the freezing point of water, and the friction heats up the already liquid-like layer of molecules to form a thin molecular-sized layer of liquid water. This liquid layer lowers the friction between your skate and the ice and allows you to glide smoothly over the ice. As your skate passes over a section of ice, the pressure is released and the friction is gone, causing the water to refreeze, leaving skate marks. So now you know more about ice skating. You know, gliding on molecules for recreational fun is why science is so cool. Special thanks to the Wichita Ice Center, which allowed us to film this so cool science file at their ice rink. For more information, head to wichitaicecenter.com.